Welcome to the Motoring Podcast, your weekly discussion of motoring news. Uh, this is episode 138 on Tuesday, the 3rd of October, 2017. Hello, I'm Alan. Hello, I'm Andrew. And this week we'll be talking about how Dieselgate is still with us. We get fired up over a bloodhound. Alan gets live in-car reviewing feedback. And we'll gush about some wonderful photos from the Revival 2017 taken by Drew Gibson. But first of all, let us go on to... Dieselgate. Some follow-up. Yes, a lot of follow-up um, condensed into three items. But tell, tell me, please, that you are just going to rush through these, aren't you? Yes. Uh, fortunately yeah. um, for us, friend of the show, uh, Gavin Braithwaite-Smith, uh, has fantastically summarized what's happened in the last couple of weeks for <laughs> Dieselgate since the... Uh, that has stunt, been about a week, mate. Stunt by... Uh, Greenpeace, there's been a few other things have gone on. First of all, just to catch everybody up to date on the Greenpeace side of things, Volkswagen said that uh, due to Greenpeace helpfully tagging all the keys, they were able to uh, find allocate keys to cars very quickly when it made it to its designated stop because um, the Greenpeace people gave all the keys back. People have been arrested, people have been charged, people are out on bail. Uh, it's delayed. Volkswagen says it hasn't delayed deliveries. People uh, who were expecting a car on that ship have said it's delayed, and Greenpeace is jumping up and down and saying, oh, it's definitely delayed. We've done wonderful things. Mm. So uh, that's what's That'll happened. go really well with those of them, you know, that, that, that'll be fan. That'll play fantastically well in court, won't it? Yes. Uh, whenever Greenpeace is saying, yes, we delayed stuff, and people are saying, so are you guilty? They can't really play not guilty if they're running around telling everyone that they've delayed things. Well, well, yeah, and the photographs of them on the ship and things like that. I don't think I don't think the pleading guilty is the issue for them, really, is it? No. Not really, no. But meanwhile, it was announced that uh, Volkswagen have underestimated or need to add another 2.5 billion euros to their Dieselgate fund to cover the cost of 2.5 the two litre diesel engines in America being fixed, that they need to do a hardware as well as software fix, which they didn't anticipate at the start of this whole thing. So that's going to take longer and cost more. Now, so I, that's over $30 billion now, isn't it? When yes. originally they were saying about, they'd set aside about 20, hadn't they? And that seemed like loads when all of this started. But we did say a while ago that the way they, they crashed through. Uh, levels they had previously put in we said that's it's not going to be anything like this by the end and we probably won't know the full extent of the cost because it'll get buried and you know <laughs> clever people with excels will make things go sideways <laughs> and we're like not that. talking lotus excel here no <laughs> The boring variety. Yes, far, far more mundane uh, but patrick mcgee who is a ft uh, motoring um journalist did tweet out that uh, this has now exceeded Moody's base estimate, so that therefore puts them in credit neg negative. So, so Moody's, just for people who don't know, are a are a large. Um, they essentially calculate the calculate the credit rating of large large organisations like um, like banks and Volkswagen and countries and things. So. Um, so that's who they are. They're, they're quite well, very quite well known in the the financial, the financial world. I'm not um, for doing lots of sort of risk based analysis of things. Yeah. Uh, also, what's happened in Belfast? Solicitors have uh, launched an action against Volkswagen. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to claim back. Um, I, I haven't been able to find that out. What they're trying to claim off Volkswagen? I presume it's something to do with misleading. Customers or something like that. So that's is, yeah. that started, and that's uh, potentially up to seventy thousand uh, Northern Irish customers of Volkswagen being brought into that class action suit if it develops. And then possibly the most damaging, because um, the money is just a bunch of noughts really uh, on a spreadsheet at the moment. But the most damaging is that Wolfgang Hatz, who was the head of engine development between two thousand and one two thousand and seven. And then the head of research and development at Porsche in 2011, who um, took um, 
I love indefinite this leave. Package. Indefinite leave when this all came to be uh, has actually been arrested in Germany over this. Did you see? He also has a severance package. His severance package was eleven point four million pounds as a golden parachute. So goodbye, Wolfgang. Here's eleven point four million pounds, and a vol and a. And a Volkswagen, oh gee, and a Porsche 911 R, which must be worth about the same again by now. Unbelievable. Um, but yeah, and you wonder why people get upset with big companies and how they do things. Mm. Never mind. So it's it in in summary, it's not been great for Volkswagen lately. No, it's been a bit of a grim week. Yeah, bit of a grim week. But better news, um, Alan. Yes, well, much better news for for Lotus. Uh, so as we talked about a few weeks ago. The Chinese automotive giant, um, according to this uh, motoring, motoring research, motoring research story by Richard Alcock. Um, so I really shouldn't make fun of it. Um, <laughs> uh, Geely Holdings, uh, who also, of course, uh, own majority shares in uh, Volvo and the London Electric Vehicle Company, which makes a new taxi. Um, have bought the majority stake in in Lotus, which is fantastic. I mean, this is the first time in quite a long time, and I'm not the first person who's who said this. I saw quite a lot of, sort of direct feedback on Twitter and stuff about this, and people saying this is the first time in quite a while that I've been been really positive about um, about Lotus ownership. Yes, the, there was a general uh, wave of good feeling, cheer, and optimism across Twitter, which is very rare these days on any subject. It so is. it was delightful to see that. And if they manage Lotus how they appear to have managed Volvo and the um, London Electric Vehicle Company, then, you know, I join you. I'm really optimistic for the future of Lotus if they are given enough, mm. enough rain to create special products. Uh, I would be amazed if they're not. And the other thing is that they fit really well into into Gilly's portfolio. Um, the new uh, London London taxi, for example, and the whole range that's built on, it is all based around aluminium uh, and extruded aluminium chassis and all that kind of thing, super modular. Lotus were the first people to do that, and they are absolute experts in all the bonding um, that has to go uh, the, that can go on in, in the assembly of those in the actual the actual the actual production of it in, in conjunction with people like Hydro Aluminium. Um, and also in the packaging, it also gives Lotus uh, access to futuristic powertrains, of course. Oh, that's the one that gets me. I'm really excited for that because I think they can take a big march on electric, mm -hmm. light sports cars, um, those, those hybrid. Compact, compact hybrid uh, two-liter engines used in uh, used in clothes. Mm -hmm. for example, uh, could well fit quite neatly uh, into a future Lotus range. And, and anyway. the cost savings then, because it's cross-company. Well, cross it's group. internal. So oh, yeah. that, that's just fun. That's desperately what, 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 what um, it is, yes, true. Uh, but that is uh, desperately what Lotus needs. They need that scale and cost-saving ability that way, don't they? And then they can, so they can really go to town. Totally, and it gives them a, a, a and it gives them an internal output output for, of course, their their Lotus engineering mm -hmm. um, as well, which is it, which has really been been quite a large a large money spinner. Um, current Lotus CEO Jean Marc uh, Gales uh, continues. Uh, he's the guy who's actually made made uh, Lotus make money, uh, whereas the Geely Holding Executive Vice President and CFO Daniel Adonghui Li becomes chairman of the Lotus Board. Uh, they now own 51% uh, overall. And I noticed from uh, one of the, the Geely PRs um, to, uh, somebody was saying, oh, no, they'll move. And, and he was saying, no, no, right at the minute there is so there is absolutely no intention of moving from, from the current Hethel base. Mm -hmm. I saw that too. Which is good news as well. Great. Which would be, which is completely in line with the way that Geely have acted so far with other acquisitions. So I, I don't really find that a humongous, a humongous. These are one of the surprise. few larger owning companies that I have some faith in. Mm. Others out there, I'm not so confident. I think they, we can, we can see in other big ones that there is um, a blanding out of the range and people just make lots of the same almost identical looking cars 
across ranges. Are you talking about Volkswagen? Again? That's one of the I, that's one of the ones that leaps to mind, but it's not the only one. Uh, yeah. Renault Nissan Alliance isn't is going down that route yeah. as well. Um, at least their design looks decent at the moment. Um, yes, there is that, but. You know the it, this one. I really think I, I could show what can and should be done with a. It's the way it's being handled. Through yes, I'm, I'm very very impressed. It's not. Uh, it seems to be thought out, which is not always the case. It looks like from afar. Anyway, moving on. One, one, yeah, one last piece of follow up, isn't it? Yes, uh, you, you may have noticed that we talked about the MOT exemption for classic cars of forty years and older that the government has said will come in well we are not alone in our strong disapproval of this an objection classic car weekly has launched a petition uh, asking the government to reconsider so there will be links in the show notes that if you like us disagree with this uh this move you can go and um put your name to it and hopefully get enough names on board and hopefully, because we've seen this recently with other petitions, the government actually listens enough to discuss it rather than just goes, we don't care, and we're going to ignore your petition. Mm -hmm. But I think as many of us need to shout about it as possible for them to realise that we as a country don't really think this is a good idea. Um, and from looking on Twitter, the majority of people I follow um, or people who uh, I see are being retweeted by people I follow – don't agree with this. There are some that agree with it and say that it isn't an issue, but we talked us through that last time. So, uh, yeah, I don't. I think we spent quite a lot of time on this over the last little while. Mm -hmm. Right, but, new yeah, news. Uh, new news. Well, new news. Uh, we're starting off. Um, I was going to say on the other side of the world, not quite, but in Saudi Arabia, where the king of Saudi Arabia has issued a decree allowing a woman to drive. So, from the start of June, twenty eighteen. Uh, ladies in uh, in Saudi Arabia will be will be allowed to drive. The reason that there's a, a ten month waiting list is uh, is for two reasons. Um, uh, first is so that ladies have time to learn to drive, and the other one, which which kind of kind of underlines the fact that Saudi Arabia is is a country uh, kicking, um, dragging itself, kicking and screaming from the Middle Ages, is that it uh, it will also uh, let men get used to the idea uh, and, and work out how to behave um, against, uh, against, towards, not against, towards uh, women drivers, which is, is a little bit, a little bit strange. A couple of reasons for this. Um, currently, <laughs> is this going to be the non-cynical reasons? <laughs> yeah, 34% of women in, uh, yes. <laughs> I think good. Uh, Thirty-four percent women in uh, in in Saudi Arabia are currently unemployed um, is 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 one of the key reasons being given that this will will enable women to get out uh, and get to work on their own because currently uh, they tend to have to to rely on such as the ubiquitous Uber uh, and also one called Kareem, uh, which is based in Dubai and operates. Um, operates in in mainly mainly Muslim countries. Um, generally, this seems to have been, or certainly from the reports I've seen, uh, seems to have been been um, been received very positively. Um, uh, uh, certain parts of the the, the kind of Saudi uh, we live in Saudi Arabia when I was younger, um, and this ban actually did cause a, a couple of a couple of challenges uh, for my parents. Uh, one of which was when my dad broke his back, uh, throwing me into the back of a early nineteen eighties Pontiac Bonville. Um, is that the boot or for fun or, or into the back seat? No, no, it's back seat. <laughs> just, 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 just in the boot. Just you. Just <laughs> when you're two and a half, three, uh, then uh, an early nineteen eighties Pontiac Bonville is a massive, massive space, uh, and so you can be thrown onto the velour sofa in the back. Um, quite easily, as long as your dad doesn't do it in an awkward fashion and knacker his back, uh, leaving uh, needing an ambulance to be called and and small child and mother uh, just basically abandoned because whilst mom, of course, could drive, she wasn't allowed to. Um, so he had to trust trust in strangers to 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 get us back to uh, back to 
back home again that particular night. So it's kind of scary for people, and, and again, uh, in the wider area. Um, yeah, as I say, kicking and screaming from the Middle Ages. This is good news, guys, um, and this is actually, this kind of thing is, is signal of a bigger changes, really, um, within within Saudi. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes, Hopefully which can it's only the be. start of much more... Um, much more progression um, into perhaps how we... Well, some would say that there has been a period of regression um, before this has happened again. What, the crucifixions? Maybe. Mm, moving on. Quite. That's not... This is, those Let's are not, go not down that, Let's go down that route. It's, no. But this Shall is we, not good news. It? This is not good news, though, unfortunately. Um JLR. Mm -hmm. uh, JLR have announced that they are going to end their deal with uh, Ford uh, Ford engines uh, from Bridgend uh, three months early. Uh, so that will stop the contract supply will stop in September 2020. Um, there's a there's a lot of very emotional language in the article on the BBC News. Union leaders said it was the news we most feared, etc., etc. Quite what three months makes, how that makes a difference, uh, that dramatic a difference, I'm not sure, because I didn't think JLR well, would be carrying on with the petrol engines after, because they're, they're doing their own engines. And at significant, and buying the Ford ones at significant licensing costs as well. Um, you know, and by introducing their own two-liter engine, uh, they're pretty much pretty much replaced these anyhow. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, it, it's another it's another it's an, an, you know another bad bit of news for Ford Bridgend. Um, you know, after it after is. after Brexit and everything, um, you know, it's it's another making it potentially an easy decision for Ford to make. Uh, which is which is very unfortunate. I can also see how it's a very easy decision for JLR to make as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is not a. Um, of course, this is no pop at JLR. These these are businesses that have to make money, and you know that was a significant cost get sunk into the engines from another manufacturer. So if they can do it themselves, why why would they? Uh, exactly, and um, this should not be a big surprise. Yeah. So the, so Sorry, so the the, the statements sad, from. The um, economy secretary Ken Skates is just stupid. I mean, that's just ridiculous. What I mean, he's, he's, there's a politician there that obviously has, you know, economy secretary who has no idea about business. Well, that's brilliant. Well done. That's what happens. Idiotic. With yeah, it's just idiotic stuff. It doesn't help anyone because then he makes it out as though it's JLR's fault and it's not. So, and the GMB union similarly. Now, the one the thing, yeah, GMB union in in there too. So I, I don't understand how this could be a, a, a huge surprise to anyone if you've been paying the slightest bit of notice. And I don't mean the kind of level that listeners to this show me. Yes, <laughs> <right. laughs> pay because you guys are about as special as us, really. Um, maybe, but, you know, even just... A coloured map for everybody to say, these are the plants that might yeah. be in trouble because of these decisions that have happened elsewhere. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, these are the same people who will who will... Who will scream and shout about the extra jobs that JLR are bringing into this country by building new engines? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Can't wait. Can't nope. wait. No. Nope. Right. Moving on from oh, that. There was one other piece. Oh, of sorry. Extra news, which isn't in our lineup. There was a muttering during the week, by the way, uh, over the last couple of days, that they're going to to buy another brand. I'd heard another that, but premium. I think that that seems it's so too gossip. rumory to. It's too rumoury to be proper. It was so gossipy that nobody could name what the brand may be. That's true. I have a quick theory, which I haven't seen anywhere else. Well, uh, so I just want to see, say, so I, think, yeah. I think they would buy Lincoln from Ford. and um, Just for the American and market. That, and have, that for, the, uh, and have uh, that for the American market. Do they not have a good enough and reputation the out there with Jaguar Land Rover? I don't know. Well, the trouble is they've got a bit of a reputation for being breaky. Mm. People remember Lucas Electrics and stuff, whereas Lincoln is 
pretty cool. Anyway, that was just my theory. That's okay. all I wanted to well, say. It's, that was, uh, that was, you know, we heard it here first. Apparently. It's merely a theory based on nearly no knowledge. But, okay. Hey, that's not <laughs> that's stopped us for two years. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, yes. Situation normal. <laughs> right, come on, scrappage. Oh, sodding scrappage. You can tell that somebody else put the blooming... Let's talk about who has leapt latest on the way to no, sell let's cars. let's not bother. I'm sorry. Um, there is a whole list. There will be a link in the show notes. It will take you to the motoring research story, I assume. Motoring there's also research story, yeah. Uh, but there's, there's also an auto car one that has everybody's. Also equivalent an auto car, which has everybody's. The latest one is Mitsubishi. They're offering you £6,500 off, uh, off an Outlander Fev. Um, which also includes the government's grant. Just, yep, exactly. So two and a half thousand pounds of that is the plug and car grant from the government. Four thousand pounds worth of that is is from Mitsubishi. Um, the scrappy team goes on. It covers Mirage um, and decent stuff like the ASX as well. Um, you've got to have a make them a, uh, You've got to trade in a car with Euro one to four emission standards registered before the end of two thousand and nine, and you've got to have had it registered in your name for at least six months. Uh, everything that goes through this will be destroyed. So yeah, um, of course, whilst it is the third of the month, um, uh, the September figures uh, won't be out until. Uh, until next week that's probably going to be one of next week's items and we'll just see we'll just see um if there is good reason for this to have been introduced from yes. a commercial point of view from mitsubishi this is the big one mm. i'll be interested to see anyway boom, boom, boom. good news though good news now so we, we seem to be swinging from extremes this week we do <laughs> there's not many middle ground right Bloodhound SSC has done its first live testing, uh, chain down, <laughs> brakes on, chocks in front of wheels. They uh, cracked open the engine, and um, the throttle was pressed. Cracked open the engine. Yep. I, I know what? all the technical terms. Uh, Andy oh. Green uh, pressed the pedal down so that they could get uh, maximum reheat, and... Um, Everything worked as they expected. They got the data they were expecting to see. They got the power output they were expecting to see. Um, so that all sounds well. Yeah, so this wasn't just a case of uh, turning it on and, and seeing if it was going, although that was part of it. Uh, it was an actual chance to make sure that the entire system works. Uh, but the idea was also to take it right the way up to maximum reheat, to to check um, to check that the basically to check that it was going to put out as much thrust as they were expecting. Uh, remember, Thrust SSC is powered by a Rolls Royce EJ two hundred jet engine. That's the same one as used in a Eurofighter or whatever they're calling the Typhoon. Eurofighter this week. Yeah, that's a yeah Eurofighter. So a Typhoon. Um, remember, this is a, a vehicle that is in order to get it up to get that part all starting to feed enough fuel through is using a supercharged Jaguar V8, Jaguar V8 engine as the fuel pump. <laughs> That's the fuel pump. Which is so, fantastic. I know. Not only is it awesome that they managed to get it, to, you know, that, that, that it is running, that it has been taken up, up to, to speed. Um, not up to speed, but up to, up to heat. Um, it, it's... It, Supposedly, the data was looking pretty decent. That so, feels uh, such a British thing, though. Someone's gone, Brian, what oh. have we got on the shelf that we could use as a fuel pump? Oh, God. Well, hang on. We got this V8. Let's just chuck that in and maybe that'll work. No, <laughs> I know it isn't, done, I know awesome it isn't done like sponsor. that. I know it isn't done like that, but because the, there's some incredibly clever people who have spent a long time thinking about this and working everything out. And that is awesome mm. that the first time they've live tested it, it has worked exactly as they all expected it to in the manner they expected it to as well. That's just brilliant. Because that, you know, everything up to now is on a computer, isn't it? Everything up to now yeah. is, well, our software says and our predictions are, but you never really know until, 
you know, and this is why they do these live tests. You never really know until, you know, you hit the go button and press the pedal down further and further. <laughs> it was all done at Newquay, by the way, it was all done at Newquay Airport, who were setting themselves up, according to their stand at a trade show I was at recently, to as a place where you can do this kind of thing in the UK. So for some big engineering and stuff, then then uh, it's setting itself up there. So it was all done at Newquay down in... Devon, Cornwall. Oh. I should know. I don't know. Southwest. We didn't get that England far. Though. We didn't get that far. We didn't get that far, did we? No. Um, I, I was just sorry. I just noticed who one of the sponsors were, and I just want to double check that I am correct. Oh, I can't see it. Yeah, it's Geely. Geely is one of the sponsors. Yes. That's why I was double checking. Yeah. Because it was written on the side in, in um, uh, not in. In the appropriate script for the original, um, as well as companies, you know, big British companies like Rolls Royce and, and and stuff, and Norwegians like Namo. Unusual. Anyway, that's fantastic stuff. Uh, but that brings us very neatly to uh, this week's uh, roughly midpoint, probably, uh, and a point in the show where I remind you of our Patreon, where you can support the Motoring Podcast by donating a small amount every month. And thank you so much. It's the start of the month, uh, so the donations have, have, have come out from our existing, our existing patrons. And we reset again by saying, come on, we'd really, really like one more patron this month at least please please uh, yes, pretty please more about what we what we offer uh, uh, what we give to you um, including the ability to see us record this live uh, if you really are that much of a masochist um we're great right the way as well to, <laughs> right the way to yeah uh, right the way to 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 simply receiving an email um most of the time we receive uh, uh we we put out a new uh, we we put out a, a new show, uh, and I promise I'll get better at that, folks. Um, then uh, then please head off to motoringpodcast.com slash support and click on the orange Become a Patron button uh, on the front page. Of course, if you're already a patron, uh, as I've uh, pretty much just said, then thank you so very much. Uh, we understand that not everybody's able to donate money. Um, and uh, please don't forget to like, rate, and leave feedback via the podcast pl- by the podcast playing platform of your choice. Please I do. My way, I started no. my way through that fantastically, didn't I? No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, um, okay. you've you've driven a car. Tell us about how you drove a car, Alan. In possibly, is this a bit of an exclusive for? The I show? think it actually is a bit of an exclusive for the show. Uh, whilst it wasn't. And part of that is because it wasn't a media event. Um, it was actually um, it was actually an event for people who have uh, stump who have every intention of stomping up some of their own cash for the Toyota Yaris GRMN. Um, so yes, yeah, so, what does grim sound uh, mean? Well, it depends how specific you're being. Well, uh, if let's be motoring podcast specific then. Uh, um, it stands for Gazoo Racing Meisters of the Nurburgring, as opposed to Gazoo Racing Masters of the Nurburgring, which is is the direct translation of it and makes you sound a little bit less pretentious uh, as as you go through it. Uh, so it is as if you haven't heard this from me uh, before. Um, it is the it is the new little um, little shouty Yaris uh, that's been it's been on the cards for a little bit of a, a little while. They've had about two years of development by the time it's or it will have had about two years of development uh, by the time it's actually built, launched, and, and available to us customers uh, sometime towards the end of Q one next year. Okay, so give you so some time to save pennies. Time. Give me some time to save some pennies. Yes. Um, oh well, no more road trips for us then. <laughs> yeah, no more. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, so yeah, so it gives me a chance to to to, to get ready for that. Uh, but it is essentially a. Th- no, let me stop. This is going a little bit too motoring podcast too quickly. 
so the aim of which is to have a really cool rally inspired uh, from from you know uh, WRC rally inspired Toyota Yaris model mm -hmm. based kind of loosely on the uh, on the rally spec one. In in a way, it's going to be almost as close as you can get to the sort of um, to those kind of early nineteen eighties yeah uh, race on. Uh, race on, race on Sunday, buy on Monday type cars. Although, to be honest, the the the, the reality is slightly different, but it's that same kind of that same kind of idea. Okay. So, where did you go to do this? Okay, I went to Silverson. I was at Stow Circuit, at, at Stow Circuit at Silverson, and it was one of those days that starts very much like media events do, uh, with. Um, it started with a bit of a chat from people who know all about it. Actually, it started with bacon roll, so it really was just like a media event. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, bacon makes everything better. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and decent coffee too. Um, which, trust me, on Monday morning actually did make a big difference. So I got a bit of a chat uh, from the 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 program leader, from engineering, who's a stat, a chap called Steen, who's surname i have completely forgotten and despite flicking through this we didn't get a printed copy we're incredibly so sorry to her to pr please don't come down i and beat am us so up. so sorry i said well yes one was total marketing but yeah um so uh, despite me scrolling through this press release which i have in front of me here for, for, instead of no, proper notes um then then i can't actually remember it but he ran through uh, he went through uh, just the level of engineering that has gone into this little car so it's markedly different from the normal well for us here it's not in just a, what i'm saying is it's not just a a few stickers a couple of right. nice alloys where, where do i where do i breaks, start? that sort of maybe a, a bit of a shoutier exhaust There's, this is no, this is a a dedicated separate step up yeah okay and if i thought it was going to be that i wouldn't have been there uh so uh, what it is is it's a three-door yaris now you don't get a three-door yaris in the uk anymore new uh, so it is the three-door Yaris body shell because, of course, it's stiffer, um, not having to have an extra pair pair of doors in the back. Um, and what they've done is they've shoehorned. Well, is it quite shoehorned? Not quite shoehorned. They have fitted in the 1.8 liter uh, supercharged uh, engine uh, that essentially has come 80 odd percent uh, straight out of the Lotus. Straight out of the okay. Lotus. And, and how many of your metric horses does that give you? That. Uh, uh, it's about, if I remember rightly, it's about 210, uh, 209 metric horses. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm not an expert on these things, but that seems quite a lot for quite a small car. It is, it is, for, for really a, a very a very small car. So it's it's the lightest in its class. It's significantly lighter than a, the, the, than a Fiesta ST. Ooh. Um, yeah, uh, significant, and not just that, but it also has uh, it also has a limited slip differential in the front too, so it can help actually put those horses onto the road without pulling you left, right, and everywhere. Uh, so that it's even better at that. It has uh, a serious amount of bracing comes as standard. Um, so there is uh, a top strut mount, uh, strut brace. There is extra bracing uh, under the engine um, as well. There's bracing at the rear, uh, sort of rear diagonals to so uh, you have right to watch your speed bumps near your house. Then, uh, no, it should be more subtle than the stuff <laughs> that's on the piece board. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's all all tucked up uh, quite neatly in there. But yes, I probably will have to watch the speed bumps anyway. Uh, so not just that. Where was I going from there? Oh yeah. Uh, so that's the goey stuff, or some of the goey stuff. How's the stoppy stuff? The stoppy stuff. So the soppy stuff, uh, it's discs all round, funnily enough. Uh, the ones on the front are many millimeters large. Uh, 275 mil. Mm. Front, front discs. Now they went, now they, they said there was a decision that they could be made. They could have really big brake discs with, you know, just standard calipers. Or they could go for a medium sized brake disc which didn't look quite so outsized, was significantly lighter, and a four-piston front calipers on the front. So four-piston brake calipers on it. That's the kind of thing that you normally see on, I don't know, high-end Subaru WRXs, that kind of thing. Okay. okay? Um, 
to give you an idea what they, the other thing that they spent a lot of time and effort on is the exhaust because of course it's supercharged that you don't really you, you don't need any any back you don't really need any of the back pressure that you need with with turbos so the idea is to just get the air out of the engine as quickly as you possibly can and so um, side splitters no it doesn't go out the side no, 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 no. Flames. it does go out the back and it goes out in the middle oh uh, you know i wouldn't be hugely surprised if there were flames if you were going hot if you were going hard enough and it was dark well, um, maybe i'll follow you one night when you get yours <laughs> oh yeah uh, if you can yeah. Um, uh, so they put loads of effort into this exhaust, and it both sounds brilliant, but supposedly it, it was a little bit of a packaging nightmare to just try and get the throughput that you needed from a car that really was only really originally designed to have a 1.3, 1.5 engine in it. Uh, so the packaging for that is particularly tricky. Wheels, 17-inch BBS uh, multi-spoke alloys. Now, these aren't just like normal GP frauds oh look here's an alloy wheel uh, these ones are actually forged uh, rather than being cast they were telling us that saves about 1.6 kilos per corner uh, that's how serious the one the the, the weight saving was tires of Bridgestone Potenza REO 50s uh, 17 inches 205 45r17s um, they were saying there's they lots sticky of enough for you or they did seem quite sticky on that. They were plenty sticky on the track. My only worry with Bridgestone Potentas is that they do wear quite quickly and they're not very cheap. So the combination of those two is a bit tricky. <laughs> Chat was saying, he was saying, you know, you can go for others. You can go for other tyres, depending on whether you're doing more track or more road. He said, we don't know what anyone's going to do, so we, so we, do a, 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 we get a, a, an all-round tyre. He said, that said, tyres, brakes, general consumables, their test driver... Uh, was finding that the brake pads, for example, which aren't crazy race spec, but they're pretty serious given, you know, they have to take, they have to, they have, to have enough space to start off with for four pot calipers. They were doing about 20 laps of the Nürburgring. Flat out. If anybody who's driven the Nürburgring on vaguely road pads uh, will understand just why. And that's 20 consecutive, by the way, <laughs> not just 20. Um, will understand just quite what an achievement that is. I mean, I know that I once a long time ago foolishly did two consecutive laps of the Nürburgring. Halfway around the second one, I just wanted it to finish. It was, it was just awful. And the smell of brake, which were performance pads and clutch, were just, just awful. So don't, don't do that. There's spoilers and sticky on stuff on the outside nobody cares about that very much other things the interior so the interior wheel out of a gt86 although it's got a custom grmn logo in the middle um uh and ultra suede seats uh, now the seats aren't ultra suede, what is ultra suede? Ultra suede. it's like suede with the word ultra in front of it. That's good. Okay. I think it's the best thing about going to Vienna or something like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Um, <laughs> the, uh, You've got months been, of this to come. <laughs> I know. Uh, the thing is, it would be all right if it was just you. I know. Um, <laughs> I get this in person from mates as well. I, I can't believe it. Um, and him. Uh, so they have been designed and developed specifically for the Yaris GRMN <laughs> by Bushoku, part of Toyota. Uh, the idea is they are actually road seats, but they're really serious road seats. The, why that makes a difference is because if you're like me and you're the kind of idiot that goes around and fits race seats to cars, what you do is you find you're really well held in. You can't get out. You're really well held in. Yeah, uh, we've got, yeah, that's now the passenger seat because okay. it was just a little bit too tight. But there's always a gap behind your head. Now, you're, those of you who remember me talking about a, a, certain, a certain red of the Japanese high-performance hatchback will remember me grumbling and muttering about having a sore neck because the thing accelerated so quickly and there was no head support unless you were wearing a helmet. Mm. Um, well, these ones, you know, the headrest is in the proper place for you not to be wearing a helmet, but you've got all the rest of that grip. Uh, from those seats, really cracking. What amazes me through all of this is that all of this engineering that gets you not to 60 in 6.3 to 6.5 ish, not quite sure yet, 143 mile an hour electronically limited top speed in a Yaris. Oh my okay. God. Um, 
and all sorts of other ridiculous numbers um, for the UK and right-hand drive, there's only going to be 100. For the whole of Europe in total, including the UK, 400. They're just the level of engineering and development that's gone to this. I don't tell Toyota, but I don't know how they're going to make any money on this or if they are. They're I think not, it's going to be are they? Here, but I don't think they're going to. I but don't care. I'm very happy that they're not, or if they're prepared to do this, then I don't care. I, this is, it's so awesome that they're doing this. It really is. And I'm not just saying this because I want to buy one. Um, no, but it, it's, it, but seriously though, it, it is great that it's happening. I mean, you, you see companies doing it on Halo projects, you know, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the Bugatti, you know, that's a famous loss making vehicle. Um, you know, that, and that is so ridiculous. It, you know, all we can do is look at it on a TV program most of the time. The, the for, Lexus for, whose, name, whose name escapes me right at the moment, which is R no, it's not RCZ. Oh, LSF or something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No. Oh, that's so embarrassing. We're going to get so much grief from Toyota for that. Um, but, but yeah, uh, fair enough on the, you see them all doing it on a halo project because of oh, its brand awareness and look what we can ultimately do, et cetera, et cetera. But to do this on a very attainable, uh, very, oh my God, for those of you who do not have the smell of vision, he's just put uh, on, uh, his grim cap from gazoo racing, Toyota gazoo racing. Um, I've got which uh, he will then be appearing in their winter catalogue, pointing uh, pointing yeah, at with... things in the distance and checking the time, along with, along, <laughs> along with the pen and the lanyard and everything else. Yeah, um, but but it's great to see that this has been done in cars that are actually attainable, bar the numbers they're producing. But price wise, it's attainable for yeah. so many more people, uh, and it is possible for you know, uh, us mere mortals as opposed to the people who happen to have, you know, 75 bank accounts and things like that that are all chock full of cash. Yeah. It's cracking. It really is. From from that point, exactly what you've just said, I think, it, I think it's great. And it's it's like me supporting supporting the rear-wheel drive sports cars, and I know I'm now going for a hot hatch, but I'm also supporting the concept of building these limited production versions of attainable vehicles. This isn't a 911R like we joked earlier on. No. You know, it's probably going to be rarer, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. I think they built nine, we're building 991 of them. I'm sorry. What, what could possibly go wrong? I think this is wonderful. Remember Toyota have, in Akio Toyota, they have a, a chairman who is quite happy to go out and race cars uh, to do donuts in GT86s. Uh, and be quite happy for the film to go out everywhere. And this, they've got a car guy at the top, and I think that that's genius. I think that's so pleased. That's so great. I haven't talked about how it drove yet, um, and I'm fairly waffling on, so I'm sorry. Uh, but there's just loads to get through on this. Um, the just the driving was amazing. So we got um, so the way the rest of the day worked once we'd had our, our, our tech talk, which was super interesting but you know what i'm like um was we then went out and got shown the the got shown the track in gt86s did a couple of kind of laps to get the idea of where the track went in gt86s uh toyota gb had brought over the only four prototype grmns in existence so they were still all camoed up Please don't bend them. Please don't bend them. Please don't bend them. Please don't bend them. And that's what I pointed out to the Wien Yaf uh, on uh, on the the Yaris Club UK um, Facebook sub forum. Who 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 went? Oh, look at all that money, and you still can't drive. It's like, mm, yeah, yeah. Last time I drove on track was before you could have legally got your license uh, for starters. Uh, secondly, when you know there's only four of them. And you, know that, said, you know that we say bend uh, don't bend the press cars. This is even Clear. more. This is even worse than that. <laughs> even worse. So there's one really pretty one. It's okay. I'll just drive in first, all the way gently finished. round. It's fine. It's fine. I know. And then you got four, the four prototypes. Um, so yeah, yeah. So please, if you when you go look at the video, uh, my my, yeah. So when you when you say prototype, though, how far off? What is will end up if everything so, goes well on your drive was it then 
because we we hear prototype uh, a lot don't we but some we do. not all prototypes are equal and we're very very good at going oh look the rough drone prototypes what use is that all mm. right so hands up hypocrisy in action here guys hey, um, we never said we weren't hypocritic <laughs> no that's true uh so well yes of course we'll borrow, we'll borrow a lamborghini um or a volkswagen uh so the uh so the difference is test driver said normally when they're doing prototypes the pedals are a bit more widely spaced than 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 one would expect finally um there may be some there were some other bits and pieces like the start stop button didn't have the gr logo on which it's meant to have in the production one it just said start stop but, but your dash was laid out as it would be but what otherwise the, the what they're pretty much out. expecting to be there there might oh, be yeah. a couple of little tiny tweaks but yeah, essentially yeah. it's not like oh we've we've just got this pod on top of a dashboard that shows you the speed no, no neither were all... there great big start stop buttons or any of these things that we sometimes see in pictures there was no disguising on you know there was no no camo on the interior the mm -hmm. big difference that was pointed out to us was the exhaust note at low revs for town driving will yeah. Be quieter however Boom. when you nail it when you nail it like we were uh you know going around the track because it's got maybe, I've probably got eight or nine at least eight or nine laps of the stow the stow complex uh, at still isn't it uh, in in the grm uh, alone uh, before being shown how you should do it by the pro <laughs> who is yeah, that is that the chap that's a bit different is that the chap that gave you uh in the car car feedback great. on your on how you were reviewing <laughs> the car to camera. <laughs> yeah, I, I spat my coffee well, that was out. It. That was the only I, only I know that was on because when I saw, I spat my coffee Why out. Why do you think I included it? Because I thought it was hilarious. That's brilliant. Because I'd not really said much. Because I was trying to get an idea of the car. I was trying not to crash it. I was trying to get around the thing. <laughs> And that you know fun. what, boys and girls, yeah, thanks, it's actually hard to drive and talk. So, uh, which is yeah, something yeah. we knew anyway, and which is why that we we I just like to point, yeah. everyone who does it well on on the YouTubes and on telly. You, we are in awe of the the ability you have to drive and talk at the same time. Exactly, and I did do a little bit of driving and talking after that to try and make you up did. for it. But I was mostly concentrating on how he asked you good questions. He did. He was really good for that, wasn't he? And yeah. he didn't know that those was sent him to do the podcast. Otherwise, hopefully, he wouldn't have been quite so scathing. But no, it was, it was funny. It was it was good fun. No, Great. there, there is a link in the show notes. Go watch the video because yeah. it is actually um, it is good fun. Um, they did video of all of us. I, I took out two laps from the many laps. Um, so the one near the end where I uh, where I I was being egged on. I should point out to not break going through a particular S section and the car had more so skills. That's the bit where you swore. Me. That was a bit where I swore in that it stuck right the way through um, without, because I'd been lifting off a bit and I was being told I was gonna, to. Because I, I was wondering, because I, I, could, I could see how it went through there and how everything, everything was happening in the cabin. And I was wondering, why did he get upset at that point? That looked like it was just the perfect, the perfect line to do that. It you, was you, everything it was, was uh, you absolutely nailed that. That's what I first thought when the guy next year, when your instructor was next year, and when he first exclaimed after you had blanked out what you said, I thought he was just going to go blank out. I said I didn't say it very loudly. Thankfully, it was uh, mostly under my breath. But um, yes, I, I was going a little bit quicker than I was comfortable with, but I was following his instructions, and the car just went through, and I was I I was clearly the weakest. I know I was the weakest link. I have a bit more video, which I'll put out as well, which is of him driving, okay, doing two laps, uh, and doing two laps with me as a passenger, um, which I don't really say much, mostly because I'm in awe of people who are just so flaming handy. Mm. Um, it is something I want to do more of. I want. I, mean, it was, I was driving it drive. on a track. <laughs> oh yeah, don't tell me about it. Um, but it was, uh, it was purely driven on track is a lovely smooth surface uh, so there was no yeah you know, i can't comment on what ray quality or anything was like it really doesn't roll uh, which is important the it fairly sticks again tracks are kind of stickier than real life real roads i'm still smiling about it 
Um, yeah, but it was it was uh, moist season. day, wasn't it? It was moist. No, no, it, wasn't. no it was dry. dry, was it? Right. Okay. I can't even pretend it was moist. It was bone dry. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad for your first going one that it was dry. Oh, yeah. Right. So the big question is, uh, I think we all know it from the way you've been speaking so far. Are you happy that you've uh, put a kidney down for this? Uh, and will you be shelling out another kidney for the rest of it? Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> <In a word. laughs> no, yes, excellent. totally. Uh, totally. I, I'm absolutely delighted. I was there with, in my session in the morning, there were six others. Um, we're all grinning from year to year. Um, and, you know, we're probably relatively hardcore subset yeah but you are going to be considering there's a hundred people or a hundred vehicles going to mm -hmm. be in this in this country you've got to be fairly nerdy well to um, know yeah. and to be interested enough to shell out for something that is going to be so exclusive yet it's not exclusive as in you know it's worth more than most people's houses exclusive so yeah, so that was one thing. So I was driving. Uh, I, I was driving down to, um, I was driving down there yesterday morning, and uh, and I, it suddenly dawned on me. I thought, what other morons are going to have forked out, are going to be prepared to fork out twenty six grand, twenty six two hundred and ninety five quid? I think it is. There are no options, people, um, to to buy to spend 26 grand on the arrows so who's going to do that and, and i turned up and it was to people because people were pleasant and nice uh, as tends to happen at any of these kind of events um it turns out it's people who generally have a history of owning toyotas and small toyotas uh or japanese sports cars or that kind of thing who just think who want something a little bit different who enjoy driving um and yeah, just just the kind of folk you'd expect, just normal folk who are a, a little bit on the, the, the sort of car nerdier edge and, and really want something that's different and want something that's a bit exclusive. And they're just dead chuffed that there is something attainable that, that fits that right at the moment. Mm, that's good. Excellent. Great stuff. Excellent. Really no, no, great. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that you got a chance to have a go in it. Um, absolutely uh, made up that we've got this exclusive. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> it's, it's like your MX-5. You, you must be the person who has done the most miles in a brand new MX-5 in this country. So if anybody needs a full-on review that is in the in this world, I'm saying. And I got the and I got the 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 numbers wrong, by the way, with the four. MX-5. <laughs> well, I thought it was a year, a month older than it was. So I've done my thirty-one thousand miles, and I've still got another month. The, so there is seen. nobody who talks about cars who has done that many miles in an MX-5 in this country. No, I know that. So yeah, completely aware. Hello, anyone? <laughs> yep. Right, usual. right. Let's move on. Uh, I was thinking of a way to segue into this next one, but I couldn't. I couldn't really. We're not allowed to say that anymore, Andrew. <laughs> I know that's why I said it. The other week. That's why I said so it. That's it. That's the last time we use that term. How are we you listen to, to say that from our listeners? Something about see you or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to avoid using the term. Okay. We were wondering how to link to this next article seamlessly, but we couldn't think of a way. So we thought we'd annoy one of the listeners. <laughs> Friend of the show, Nir Khan, has written another wonderful article, actually. Uh, this time... Well, it's a collection. It... Go on, then. I was going to say it's based on a bunch of uh, a bunch of LinkedIn um, articles and blogs that he wrote as well, collated together into this excellent article. Yes, which means you'd have to go into LinkedIn. Exactly, but he's talking about uh, the packaging of electric vehicles because up to now, electric vehicles have very much been the same as an internal combustion engine car style and look as in there is a grill even though it's blanked off and looks stupid because it's blanked off and then there's the 
the powertrain is underneath and all that, so there's nothing in the front bit where the engine might be or the back bit where the engine might be so that they use, I mean, the example is the Tesla in the picture in the um, first page of the article where it doesn't seem to use the space that efficiently. Which Well, it has a front. Which really annoys me. <sighs> the term, I knew it would. That was well, such a no Well, not, not, no, not, not, not the, the name. I mean, the name's just stupid. Um, and, and I'm not going to go into that. So we'll just ignore that and pretend it doesn't <laughs> exist. But the the ridiculous use of that space in that picture is... If I'd done something similar <laughs> like that working in the architecture firm that I did, I would have had the, the drawing screwed up and thrown at me in the computer. It was that much of a waste you, of space. You're being unfair because there's also a whole load of crash structure and stuff in there too, which is what impedes on that space. So it's not, no, 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 it's no, no, not no, no, all no, no, being no. not used for luggage. No, 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 no. The eng an engine would take up more space than that. So it isn't just that. They have been they have been lazy in the space they've used. I understand there is crass yes, protection. Yes, Andrew. But anyway, moving on from that, because I'm detracting completely yes. from the excellent article, which uh, link will be in the show note, where Nia goes on to uh, discuss how... Uh, we're going to see some really interesting and different looking vehicles because we're going to have the ability to do that because an electric vehicle is not made it is not does not need to be uh it does not need to look the same way and as a uh, internal combustion and it doesn't have those same constraints it doesn't have to follow the system panel or any of those things no uh, and that's uh, that will be interesting to see and hopefully that doesn't mean that they're all the melted bar of soap which is what seems to be the look that has been thrown at us via um anytime somebody uh, a manufacturer comes out with here's our autonomous vision of the future melted bar of soap with maybe a cutesy face on the front no i think right that. at the moment is a period of discovery for the design of electric Well, vehicles. this is a wrong time for me to be alive then. <laughs> it is. Well, to, wait, to be honest with you, it could be any time. <laughs> to be fair, if it carries on like oh. this, I may not be alive much longer. <laughs> I keel over with a heart attack of anger. <laughs> yeah. Please but don't. do go read the article, please, because it is excellent. Um, <laughs> forget forget to my it's... imminent death through anger and heart attacks and strokes. Forget that. But the article is very good. Um, Nia writes a, an excellent article. He really does. He does. Yes, it's it's fantastic. That's been commented on by friends of mine as well. Um, yeah, uh, go read it. It's on it's on uh, it's on the Form Trends uh, website. Uh, both Nia, don't forget, Nia is very first the very first guest on um, on Rear View about a year ago. Just over. Yeah. Just over a year ago now, and, and maybe uh, anytime soon it will start up again. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> and um, and uh, and and Eric, who runs who runs Form Trends, has also been a guest. They have both been. Yes, yes. I'm very very happy to have had both those on. Yeah, super interesting. So if you are looking for looking for a podcast to to listen to uh, that, that isn't news, um, then those are a pretty good place to go. Uh, very quick Formula E update. Uh, everyone is in Valencia in Spain. Uh, testing but why? At the moment. But why, Alan, did they choose Spain at this time of year <laughs> to test rather than say, I don't know, Donington in Donington. the rain? <laughs> Donington, you mean Donington, where they're all based? <laughs> I think it was something to do with the better weather and the ability to test the new packages with some sort of heat, Andrew. Because <laughs> uh, there ain't much of that around here. Uh, however, Audi, uh, formerly ABD, uh, Audi Sport Formula E team, have announced Alan McNish, um, multiple Le Mans winning um, driver of them, uh, as, as their team principal. Uh, he's been around quite a lot this last season. He's been at most races that I've seen anyway. Uh, he's been there, he's been in the pits. So he's been, it's not a huge surprise, really. So does he bring a lot of technical, I presume he brings a lot of technical race knowledge and race management. Yeah, and because, yeah that side of things. So that, um, and his name obviously is a big pull. Well, there's that um, too. Yes. So is it big names 
not just the manufacturers are being drawn to this for to this race series which is interesting to see i've been spending some time in the car recently um some time in noisy cars recently without being able to listen to stuff so i've been having to think lots um and i was thinking about this and i thought i think for some people form e was a rather good investment because if you look at abd at the beginning now they were always known for tuning audis and stuff but you know they're in there they've got their they've got the the race team and then all of a sudden the manufacturer comes along and is really really interested in a sort of we're so interested we're just there and we're getting closer and closer and closer and finally we snap you up and i'm sure that you know there's been some kind of financial payback for that and that's and, and that has made a lot of it worthwhile similarly prost and some of these other um and some of these other teams uh, which were right in there right at the start mm. okay. yeah the, the, there's some people were um did did hedge a bet um to go to go in for this and it was and a it, serious bet well, yeah, because it, it was a complete punt in the dark. It was back when everyone thought electrified vehicles are just a, a quirk, a joke, you know, pre-Dieselgate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I think, I think and this goes back to something I said a few weeks ago, where I, I think that Dieselgate has made more impact on electric vehicles than anything else that's happened to date because it has made people yeah. suddenly go oh no we're in big trouble what have we got here remotely that we can possibly leap on board of and and i think it'll help hydrogen as well but it, it's it's I brilliant because so. um uh another guest on rearview shami uh has been at the testing and i saw some um he posted out a video I think it might be the, under the Omologato Twitter handle of a video of one of the electric car, cars going past on the straight. And he asked the question, is the tone different in the cars this year? He thinks it is. And I thought it was uh, a deeper, not so much of a high pitched whine uh, quite as much. I think it's down uh, it, whatever the technical terms are for being more on base I, I i only deal with audio what do i know <laughs> yeah uh, so um so so yeah d don't forget though that the different packages which the different vehicles have oh well sorry. i know we're getting it this year that people are going to have uh different gearing uh the, different um i was going to say engines that's totally incorrect well there's there's an article about that on jalopnik was it is it wrong to call them engines um or why don't we uh so so yeah it's not just that it's it's different it's like with with last year uh then it's it's a different engine gearbox combo so different cars actually sound different mm. and you lose so much in the television if you've been to a formula e race you you don't have an issue or an epre pardon me you don't tend to have an issue with the noise um, because you've heard them for real Whereas if you've only ever heard that, what comes across is just going wee wee uh, mm. on the te on the TV. Then then trust me, you you lose a lot of it on the TV. You lose an awful. I'd lot. love to do that, Alan. Unfortunately, there isn't one going to be in London, is there? Again, not no, that not, not that moment. I've suddenly become really bitter about this. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not put huge amounts of uh, let's not be too damning about that right at the minute, uh, because there is the Formula E partners meeting uh taking place uh tomorrow the next day in valencia uh, as well okay cool all right let's move on we have uh, i think it's time uh, for you to tell us about list for the week yeah it is list of the week uh it's been a it's been a couple of weeks since we had list of the week but it's been uh, certainly longer than that since we've had one from gavin braithwaite smith i know he's, uh, not, been, he's not been on the show for for ages, and all of a sudden he's here twice. It's like he's like a, I know, a bus, a London bus. Yeah, just can't get rid of him. Um, so yeah, so this one, uh, as a as ever with a major Gav story, is from Motoring Research, and this week it is ordinary cars that are extraordinary to drive. Um, and I'm not sure how many there are actually. Uh, twenty, twenty on here. We but will again, not go through all twenty. That's good. Um, 
uh, well, you can get rid of, you can cover many of them by saying pretty much all of them has to read. Yes. <laughs> you may um, notice in the notes I have written. <laughs> You know, he does mention oh, no, other I'm, cars I'm, apart from Mazda. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a really... But, I mean, that's a great thing wouldn't. for Mazda. That they, oh, it's a fantastic because we, we have said for some time that we think that they have... I mean, I know you're biased, but um, uh, I think that they are one of the few brands that have managed to make the the brand language work on each of their models without it looking as though they've gone to a photocopier and gone... 25% down, 25% up, and moved across and done things like that. They they've got the same um, they've got the same style, but it's it, each of the different models are individual as well. Imagine if Alfa Romeo built reliable vehicles. There you go. There's a master. <laughs> um, so so yeah, but there's there's some great stuff in there that you wouldn't expect. Uh, everything from the uh, Volvo XC90 T Eight to the BMW 3 Series. I'm just scrolling randomly, and the, the MG3 and the MG3 the as well. Oh, it's fantastic! Well, all the weights at the bottom, you see. Mm. The body shells are light. All the batteries at the bottom. EVs drive really well because all the weights exactly where it needs to be. Yeah. So th there are some. There are some. If you you know, if you're thinking of a nearly new car, there are some <laughs> cracking cars to consider if you like to drive here. Is basically what Gavin's list is. A Nissan Pulsar, DIGT one ninety. Uh, you just—I would never even have considered. Didn't even really know that it existed. If you can find one of those new, it's going to have dropped a shed load of cash. Mm. So yeah, yep. brilliant stuff. Good. Great cracking well stuff. Worth, uh, well done, Gavin. That's it. That well, is a well, top list. I do like. I I think that suits us quite well on this show where. You know, because it, it says the ordinary cars, people, the ones that people were just, they're not quite sleepers because it's not talking rocket, you know, propulsion. But it is fun to drive, good to drive. You get some enjoyment out of driving them. And I think that's important in a, where driving is becoming more and more of a chore, whether it is the other users or whether it is allegedly smart motorways or whether it is speed limits that have been dumbed down because people are stupid. You know, it, it, to get any element of fun out of driving these days is very hard. I think those are some excellent points, Andrew. However, I'd also like to point out that if you have an extraordinary car that you'd like us to drive or talk about, then please don't hesitate to invite us to those events. As well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I guess, sorry. I could see everyone going, well, no, they're only interested in Suzuki, Suzuki Baleno launches. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't. So, yes. No, this is the man who's going to buy Alex. one of 100 cars in this country. Of course, we're not <laughs> just... We do like exclusive two, but we do yes. not ignore... We, what we're saying is we don't ignore anything. No, exactly. And I, that's one we of the We have an appreciation like. for all. There, there's a reason that often it's motor research and often it's major gab and uh, all the equivalents from, from Autocar and any other source like that is because there's a lovely mix in there, and that's what I like. They're completely unpredictable. Speaking of unpredictable... Yes. Uh, Andrew. Well, uh, Goodwood uh, Road and Racing, um, for their uh, coverage or sort of roundup of the Revival 2017, they've got some uh, photographers to put up their favourite photos that they took at the event. Uh, and ones that I saw this week were by uh, Drew Gibson. And um, he, di <laughs> he discusses how... <laughs> It was all four seasons <laughs> throughout each of the oh, days. Yeah. <laughs> and he said sometimes all in one race. <laughs> so that, it, which he really enjoyed the, uh, what that allowed him to do with photography, but it also uh, gave completely different perspectives. You know, if it's the same race and you're getting all those, all those conditions in one, that, that, that puts a big thing. So let alone having to, to drive through these. Um, so he, he's got a, mm -hmm a selection of uh, a few of his photographs, um, which is a mix of just the cars to the people 
and um, showing you the trying to show you the excitement and the the speed and everything else that's going on in it all and i think they're just utterly wonderful um okay. i am i am a th there's one of the particular ones i like is um i think it's uh, richard meaden's um alpha with flames coming out the side Can uh, I tell you my favorite go on then tell me yours my favorite is actually it's only it's like number four into the gallery and it is the bmw 700 in the st mary's race coming sideways in the way tail out this tiny <laughs> tail out this tiny little rear engined twin cylinder bmw absolutely minuscule and there's 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 richard meaden's alpha is just in the background and it is such a there's a major dab of oppo going on and it's just such a fantastic photo of such a genius little car yes that, that i just was love wonderful. it i mean, really it, love that photo. uh we were watching the highlights well I, I i was watching the highlights with my children because i i'm a good father so i was uh, schooling them in things they should know about and appreciate and all of them when that went off in the second race were going oh no what's happening it's, so so it's just it was a fantastic car but uh, one of my another one of my favorites there's, there, there's an awful lot of his that i i favorite is two on them. is the maserati that seems to be going sideways down the straight um <laughs> <laughs> i wish there was a little bit more of a caption to these that's the only criticism i have yes this. i just wish there was a bit of a caption about who's doing what uh, but you're quite right it is <laughs> ridiculously sideways but um, but i am i'm a big fan of uh, photographers who go to these things and they capture the people and how the people are interacting with the cars or whatever because there's there's um, a bit further down, there's a car on the start grid, and it's it, it's set up in such a way that the people walking past are slightly blurred, and you can see people looking at it and everything. And I and I love that sort of thing because it it makes me uh, feel that everyone there is a is a big lover of the cars, which they are because it's revival. They've gone there for the whole event, and the atmosphere and the feel and the vibe of the whole thing uh, which the cars are central to so this is um it, it's just wonderful this this sort of stuff uh, i'm i'm could spend hours looking at these things uh, at the bottom of the link to this article will be more uh, selections from other uh, photographers so do click through them because again there's you know it's mm -hmm. it's it's almost harsh to have just picked uh true gibson here but the, it's just there's just wonderful stuff from a wonderful event. No, they're they're all superb. Um, yeah, they're, they're absolutely great. Brilliant. Well, fantastic way to end the show. We have fairly wobbled on tonight. Yeah, we're not um, being too bad. Not being too mostly bad. me. Oh no, we have gone on a bit. Yeah, we have. But to be fair, we did um, we did need to go through in depth your on a car review and the news this week. So uh, that's value for money. Another first Anyhow. show. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I'll round up from there on. Um, so don't forget, please, folks, that between now and next week, you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts for the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Uh, please don't forget about our Patreon offer, motoringpodcast.com, or to leave us a rating and review on iTunes or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. It really, as I say every week, does matter andrew best way to get in touch with you sir best way to get in touch with me would be via twitter if you search for crack windscreen you will find me there and alan if people want to also give you uh, feedback of your in-car reviewing uh, what is the best way for them to do that and keep it to themselves because <laughs> i know what it's like uh twitter please uh, and at ajp bradley we'll be back next week uh, but until then, I've been Alan Bradley. I've been Andrew Clues. And safe motoring. <laughs>